Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mr. Amos Kesta, the CEO of Kesta Amos Consultancy Services Limited. We are still in a continuation of the series for the greenhouse videos. I'm sure you've seen some of them and they, are, they keep coming because we've been doing this for quite some time. But now is the time for us to start showing you how the snails are actually living inside the greenhouse to tell you that the greenhouse is a functional system. All right, so we're going to take you inside. We are back in Ogun State at Wasimi, where we did this greenhouse. So we'll just take you inside and show you what it looks like. All right, so this is it. You can see the way it is inside. It's all green. So um, this automatically disproves the theory that the tarpaulin does not permit photosynthesis. No, that's a wrong perception. So you can see everything inside is green. Uh, photosynthesis is not impeded by greenhouse tarpaulin. I wouldn't want to explain further on that. So, all right, uh, come inside so that you can have a clearer view. Now, these are the feeding platforms where we do the feeding. So you can see them. In the evening, we place the feed on top here after watering the greenhouse. And that's it. The snails will come on top of the feed. But during the daytime, the snails usually stay under it. All right, come, let's see if we have some here. So you can see them here. Uh, it's kind of scanty. It's a big greenhouse that should contain lots of thousands of snails. But we don't have many here. So you can see that they've moved around. So let's check just along as we go. All right. So we have another platform here. Okay, so you can see the sizes come closer so they can have a closer look. So you can see the snails during the daytime, they spend more time under the leaves. So you can see the various sizes. These were young snails that were introduced into the greenhouse from baby to what they are now, and some of them have started laying. So you can see the difference in sizes. You can see this one. This is the western, this is the southern. They can always live together inside the greenhouse, but not inside the pen. Because in the pen is a close proximity, the breeding population will be poor. But here they live naturally, so they can actually identify their species and crossbreed. Uh, sorry, and uh, mate. Of course, snails don't crossbreed. They are very selective species. So you must have pure lines. If you are having the marginata ovum, it should be marginata ovum. So they don't crossbreed between the ovum and the suturales or the acatinas and the marginatas. So these are just a few of them. So as you can see, we we'll move along. You can see the vegetation inside. We have uh, creeping crops and also uh, shade crops. Like these ones are shade crops. Let's see if we can find some snails underneath it as it's usually the case in the natural habitat. So you can see some of them here creeping close to the vegetation or the trunk of the banana plantain. Sorry, the banana uh, tree. All right, so this is it. quite interesting. Let's see if we can get some here. Wow, okay. Those can't see, but you always have one or two attached to it. You can see this size is very much appreciable now. And of course, you have some of them here. Okay. So you see, this one is dead. And this one was feeding right on the shell of it. So we show you things the way they are. We don't make up stories. We don't tell you that snails will not die in the free range system. Of course, even in the natural habitat, there are mortalities like this. You find them in the bush. But it's minimal, so that's the whole thing. And of course, when they die like this, the other snails will feed on the shell in order to derive calcium from it. And sometimes this could be as a result of cannibalism, but other times it could be natural cause of death, and the other ones feed on the shells. So these things happen even in the greenhouse. So you can see the size difference. They were all young snails introduced from the green uh, from the concrete pens. So you can see that these ones must have been introduced first before these ones. 
so that's how the sizes are so at the point where we are selling these ones off these ones are still growing so that's the whole idea you cannot have all of them at the same size because you keep introducing the snails every day or regularly all right so that is it yeah there's still one inside there make sure your hand is not showing on the camera all right let's see if we can get in there yeah okay you can see them here we're taking we're going through a lot of trouble to show you this so this is how the snails live under the leaves and under the platforms that we have set for them so in the night they all come alive after we water the fence so you see what they look like so we show you from these stages when they are growing like this to when they are fully mature snails so you know that we're not telling you stories we don't go and gather snails from somewhere and park them in the greenhouse and show you that there are snails in the greenhouse so you can see the different stages of growth i will show you the process of introducing them from the pen house to the greenhouse so this is practical you can see how they live here all right so we can't do this all day of course so i'll just show you a little about the greenhouse and we'll call it a day let's just move inside a bit you can see this is all of it Just walk you through towards the ending so you can see everywhere here is green so that's why we call it a greenhouse now uh there might be some misinterpretation or understanding lack of understanding the uv treated tarpaulin is not for preventing rain no that's not the idea of the uv treated tarpaulin the uv treated tarpaulin is called uv treated because the uv means ultraviolet ray is a ray that is emitted from the sun i've said this several times in my videos that the sun emits three major types of rays there might be others but how we were taught in the university and even in our secondary school days you have three major uh, rays the infrared ray which is a light that comes from the cameras the ultraviolet ray which is the burning part of the sun and the visible white light what is, which is what makes daylight we can see ourselves clearly because of the visible white light that is transmitted from the sun and in the night it is reduced so it becomes dark so the UV is the ultraviolet ray that is emitted from the sun that's the part that burns your skin so if we don't prevent the full effect of the UV, it will affect the vegetation and also affect the snails to an extent. That is why we're using the UV treated tarpaulin. It's not because we don't want rain to fall in here, but the greenhouse is a controlled environment. So we reduce the amount of snail, uh, sorry, water that is also flowing inside here in order for us to have complete control over the greenhouse. So that is why we install sprinklers so we can water this environment to the best we want it to we can control the amount of water that comes in here that's why we have the sprinklers and we prevent the rainwater from pouring in so that is it so the major function of the uv treated tarpaulin is not to prevent rain it is to prevent the ultraviolet rain and of course if this place thrives during the rainy season only assuming we don't use the uv treated tarpaulin and this place is only thriving during the wet season what about the dry season what happens so that is why we call it a greenhouse because we try to control the environment to suit the habitation of snails human beings are not going to live here but snails are to live here so you have to understand the habitat of the snail in order to arrange your farm setup because the most important thing is for you to get a suitable environment for your animals to thrive that's the one mistake and the major mistake you will do in order not to get the habitat right then you will have a lot of casualties in the farm so this is it uh, of course we've said a lot about the greenhouse series 
we just derive pleasure in educating you in every of our videos. So when a contrary opinion is raised, probably the person didn't really understand why we use these materials. So we try to explain these things, not just in trying to respond to people's suggestions, but we are trying to teach people, let them understand why these materials are used. Because some other persons may also have the same perception and may not know the reason why we are using these materials. So it is in order for us to get a suitable environment for the snails. So you can see this greenhouse, everything is green. This is the dry season. You can see how green it is, how much more the rainy season. So we ensure that there's enough water here for the snails, for the crops, and also to ensure that the animals are doing very well. So that is why we use the materials we have used. So uh, we want to appreciate you, even those who are critical about our videos. We want to say thank you because your criticism helps us to move forward. It pushes us to give out the best and also find new techniques to uh, bring about modern farming. So we are not in any way trying to backfire or trying to uh, counter attack. No, if we have done that before, we are very sorry. Of course, we are humans. In the first place, we are never supposed to respond to any critics. That's the first thing. So in case uh, we've said anything that looks like we are responding to critics, we are very sorry. We just want to do our best to improve farming in Nigeria and to improve it in Africa. If there's anything you can learn from our videos, please do, because we learn from every other video we watch. The things we think are not really okay, we don't talk about it, we don't practice it. We only take what is good and we practice it to improve our own agriculture and our own farming system. So thank you, we pray, and we also wish that you find our videos interesting. And if you are the, if this is your first time of subscribing to our videos, please, or seeing our videos, please don't forget to subscribe. We have great contents and we have a lot to thank you for because without you, we wouldn't be here. You have also helped to spur us on to get to where we have to be. So thank you. God bless you. The number remains plus two, three, four, eight, zero, six, eight, five, two, five, zero, three, two. God bless you and bye-bye.